Welcome to Butterflies of Wisdom, everyone. By the time you hear this, it will be Tuesday because the podcast is coming out on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now, due to I got a publishing deal, and so I'm slowly but surely working with a publisher, and I am solidifying that to send it off to my publisher. So, yeah, that's my exciting news. But I will be still producing the podcast, but enough of me rambling on. I have Doris with me. Doris is also a published author, so without further ado, I'm going to take, I'm going to let Doris take it away. Hi, it's nice to meet everyone by air. My name is, uh, my published name is Doris Vilk. That's the pen name. My real name is Dr. Dora Vilk Shapiro. I'm a retired dentist uh, over 29 years. I was originally from Cuba and have lived in the Bahamas and Madrid, Spain and Milan, Italy. I've lived in New Jersey and New York and ended up in Florida. And my story is that when I was a dentist, I started to have some health issues. And a lot of times the universe or the divine or whatever you believe in um, forces us to consider a new pathway for our lives. And my situation was that I developed neck, back pain, and some hand issues. And obviously, as a dentist, having hand issues wasn't going to work for me. So um, I always had it in my mind that I wanted to write a book. And um, things started to happen in the universe to guide me in that uh, direction. So basically, what happening is you had health issues from your career in dentistry and then it got so bad that you had to retire. Yes, I had to take an early retirement. I'm 58 years old and I uh, left dentistry at age 56. I tried teaching at the dental school for a while And that was uh, very, very rewarding, even though it wasn't (laughs) much money, but it was very rewarding. But uh, even trying to help the students started to exacerbate the, uh, you know, the physical and mental problems that the dentistry was causing. And I always had the idea to write a book, and it was, in fact, my hygienist who we were talking one day, and it was when a lot of these – Sexy, steamy romances were very popular, like the Fifty Shades of Grey and some other authors. And I told her, oh, I always had this this romance story in my head since college. And I told her the basic story, and she came to me. We didn't work every day, me for my health reasons and her for whatever her schedule was. And um, she comes to me the next week, and she says, hey, I – I was thinking about your book, and that's a great story. You should write it. Um, Around that same time, Orange is the New Black was very popular with people binging on that on TV. And uh, I was binging with my husband, and he's like, Dora, that's a lot like your story. And I'm like, you're right. It is a lot like my story. Like, I'm taking too long to write it. And I just saw those things as as signs from the universe that I need to sit down and write my book. So I went on vacation, and uh, I was on a cruise, and I took out my mini iPad, and I just started um, tapping out the scenes as I had envisioned them in my mind. And the next thing I knew, that was the birth of the uh, first book, which is Love Arrested by uh, Doris Vilk. I didn't want to use my doctorate name because I was, you know, still involved in the school at the time and didn't want to have a conflict of interest. And I just started asking everybody I knew about, you know, about writing. And uh, and that's how the book uh, was born. Now, are you traditionally published or self-published? I self-published through CreateSpace. I had gone to a romance author's uh, conference, and there was a, an author there. I don't recall her name, but she had published both traditionally 
and self-published, and she was doing better, she said, with her self-published novels than she was with her traditional published novels. And with me having had a career in dentistry for 20, over 29 years, I, I felt like I didn't have a lot of time to start sending manuscripts to publishers and you need a literary agent and all that. And uh, like my, my experience was one literary agent that was very interested and in publisher that was interested in my story said, send me the first hundred pages. And I thought to myself, in the first hundred pages, my heroine and protagonist haven't even met yet. So how are they going to judge a love story when the main characters haven't met yet? And that's when I realized okay. that I didn't have time to waste, and I decided I was going to self-publish. You know, with dentistry, there's a lot of control, both with the American Dental Association, the techniques we use, the legal, the medical legal aspects of it, um, nowadays, the healthcare and insurance becomes a big, a big yep. involvement in what you're doing. And I was so tired of others telling me how I should do things. And I just felt, you know what? I want my freedom. God is telling me, or the universe, or whatever you believe in, the divine is telling me to do it my way. That there, that there's people that are interested in it, and and. Just do it. And I decided that, no, I was going to self-publish. I was going to self-market it. I didn't know anything about writing or the author process or, or how to get it independently written. But I just asked questions. I used the networking I had done for my dentistry to uh, meet, meet the people that I already knew and ask them whether they knew something about this business or they could guide me to others. And that's how I found my graphic designer that did my book cover. And um, I knew the woman who was my editor. And, in fact, um, I liked the graphic designer's work so much that she's the one that's editing books two and three because it's a trilogy. And uh, books one and two are already out. I self-published those, Love Arrested and Love Attempted, through Create Space on Amazon.com. And book three, which is, will be called Love Avenged, is at the editors now. Oh, my God. So you've made this your full-time career. Well, as I, I said I, at the top of the show, Doris, I got a publishing deal, and so now I'm working on a um, completing and editing manuscript. Then I'm going to send it back to them and see if it's self, see if it's publishable. And then yeah. I will, um, if not, I have another publishing deal that's coming in the works to a marketing firm that I work with wants to publish my book as well. So, uh, That's awesome. But, Congratulations. Well, thank you. But self-publishing, if you do it right, it's going to make you money. If you don't do it right, it's not going to make you money. And yes. so what, what do you say to the um, aspiring author who's listening to this podcast who thinks, oh, I want to be like Lynn. I want to be like Doris who has two books out, ten books out, my 11th book, and I'm working on my 12th and 13th book. And so what, what do you say to them? I say that the wisdom is that you, you have to be willing to put the work in. Number one, you have to write the story. And, if, and, and whatever story you have in your head, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, you have to get out on paper, whether you handwrite it. In my case, because of my hand issues, I type everything. Um, you have to get it down. Then you have to edit, 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 because every time you think you're done, you will, ma you will find typos and things, especially nowadays with the spell check. You think that does it all for you, but words like two, T O T W O T O O. The spell check doesn't yeah. touch things like that. So you must must yeah. edit yourself. 
I mean, I must have read the, my books uh, 15 times. Then you need a professional editor, whether you decide to use the ones through Create Space, which becomes a little bit more reasonable. In my case, I wanted the tops. I said if you were a New York Times bestseller or an Amazon bestseller, or you had a movie deal, who would you have? And I went for the best. So that means you have to be willing to invest the money. And obviously, the higher price that you can afford to pay, the better quality of person that you're going to get helping you on your team. So in my case, I hired an editor. I hired a cover designer because I didn't want my cover to look just like every other romance book out there. I wanted something yeah. different and special. I went for hair and makeup and had a professional picture taken. Um, you know, I went all out. And so you have to be willing to make the investment so that in the beginning you may be spending a lot of money knowing that at some point – the books will be out, and yes, money will come in. It may take a, a while before you make a profit. So people think, oh, I'm going to write a book and I'm going to make all this money. You know, you have to pay your dues. I say it's like a coffee making, uh, uh, percolating. You have to have a good machine. You have to put good coffee in it, good coffee beans. You have to put quality water in it, and then you have to wait. You have to have the time for the coffee to percolate until you get that delicious cup. And I feel like right now I put the book out there, I published the book, I'm working hard to market it, and now I have to let it percolate until enough people start reading it and it starts catching on. Um, people can read the reviews on Amazon to make sure that the book is something that they enjoy. If it's something that's not up there, Ali, they can recommend it. You know, we all know people that do like that. Um, I originally read Fifty Shades out of curiosity because half my friends loved it and half my friends hated it. And I always say, you know, sometimes we're in very happy relationships. My husband's a sweetheart. He's like Winnie the Pooh. But sometimes a woman needs a little tigger, too. And so this fantasy of this, um, my main character named Susan Chatham and who ends up being her lover which I don't want to say the name not to spoil it for the for the readers but um you know that basically my fantasy ended up becoming my book and I dedicated the first book Love Arrested to to my hygienist who told me to write it Sharon Cotler and I dedicated my second book, Love Attempted, to my husband, because isn't that what marriage and relationships is? We we attempt to love each other. You know, we try to give it our all. Yeah, exactly. And so where can people find you, and where can people find your book? So the, the best way to buy the book is go to straight to Amazon.com and look under Love Arrested by Doris Vilk, and that's spelled D-O-R-I-S. And Vilk is like milk with a V. It's V as in Victor, I-L-K. Or another way, if someone wants to just follow me and see the links to social media and there's also a link to Amazon to be able to buy the books and you can find out when the new book comes out um, is through my website and the website is www.dorisvilk.com and again that's D-O-R-I-S V as in Victor I-L-K dot com and we will have all Doris's information in the show notes. Trust me, you guys. And this podcast has been sponsored by Grace by Grit. Grace by Grit is a closing line out of California, and they're giving you 20% off when you type in the cold Exo Butterflies on their website. So when you get sick of Lululemon, which is another closing line, you can go with Grace by Grit and, of course, get the 20% off call. But before I let Doris go, I want her to ask me a couple of questions about anything. 
Uh, questions about anything. Well, I'd like to know more about your uh, podcast and how it got started and what your readership and uh, your listeners are. I, okay, I wrote a book. I wrote my autobiography at age 23. Autobiography number one at age 23. And I self-published it on Amazon. And since then, since publishing that book, that book just turned wildfire. And so did my second autobiography, which recently came out. And then that book turned into this podcast because people started asking me, how do you do all this with a disability? And so that book, I Come a Win, which could still be found on Amazon, turned into this podcast. Now it's a little green monster that I can't control. I thought I would just write a book as a form of grief therapy, but no. Mm-hmm. So it's, yes, it, it's so like the universe. The universe pushes us to write what's really what we were meant to tell our stories. Yes. So once you get the self-publishing bug, you will um, it will stick with you. Yes. Yes, and it's you know the thing is that when we write a book, whether it's our story, like your real story in your case, or a made-up story in my case, the human emotions and the the feelings that people have and what they go through are real. So everybody, all the fans that are out there, all the people that read our books, um, can can find something that they can relate to that touches them in some way. Um, because they're, the human experience, we all have that in common, you know, things that make us laugh, things that make us cry, sad, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yes, so that's how I started this podcast. This podcast mm-hmm. has been based off a book, and recently, I, as of today, August 18th, I got a publishing deal. So I shall have to um, put my sights on that. And, uh, yeah, Yeah. this is the first time I've had a publishing deal. And so I will be working on the edited manuscript and working on editing the manuscript, working on finishing the manuscript, editing, and then sending it off to my publisher. Yes. Yes, because sometimes a publisher, and even when you're working with a private editor, they may have you go back and rewrite uh, parts of your story because, you know, they're not liking the way it sounds or they'd like to see some more clarification or they think that the reader will want to know more information about a certain thing. So I, my advice to the people out there that are thinking of writing a book is that, you know, when you think you're done, you're really only beginning, but uh, it's always worth the effort in the end, you know, and, uh, you you know, whether it's telling your autobiography and people can learn from you or writing a fictional story that's about a woman that's very resilient and a really empowered woman. I mean, yes, my novel is hot and steamy. But it's really about um, learning to use all your senses, senses of sight and touch and smell and taste and your feelings and being resilient and not being a victim and using using anything that happens to you that's negative to help empower you. Um, you know, I did it with uh, taking the time that I wasn't, using to be a dentist to write my book, and the heroine in my story uh, uses her resilience to uh, to end up with a better outcome than she would have been had she not uh, been arrested, you know, and there's no, there's no uh, hints in that, spoilers, because the book is called Love Arrested, and uh, the cover is uh, feet with little handcuffs coming off of them, so... Uh, 
to me it signifies her freedom, but uh, it could also signify the sauciness of the steaminess of the hotness of the book. Yeah, it could. Yes, it could. Well, I appreciate Doris's time today, and by the time you guys listen to it, listen to this, it will be Tuesday, and so I hope you guys go follow Doris on Amazon and pick up a book because they sound amazing. I'm actually going to pick up a book as soon as I'm done with my publishing deal, and then I'll have time to read. By now, I don't have the time to read a book, mm-hmm. but I will um, catch you guys next week, and I hope you guys enjoyed another fabulous episode. Thanks to you guys. Thank you, Doris. Thank you.